Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, co-founder of Connections, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the Ginger Kid Hide and Seek activity. Now, Ginger Kid Hide and Seek is a very simple yet powerful activity. The main objective is to get students to practice missing add-in problems, but you're going to find out that um, it's really an awful lot more than simply missing add-in problems. The um, Ginger Kid Packet comes with five ginger houses, Ginger Kid Chips, Counting Beans, and five 1 through 20 counting strips. The activity can be done with small groups of kids, but it's best done one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the first thing that you want to do is choose a number that you know uh, the student is comfortable with. A three or four. I'm actually going to choose the number seven. And you're going to write that in the window of the ginger house. Um, now here's a tip. Dry erase markers work best. Um, wet erase tend to get kind of messy when you wipe them off and uh, they have a tendency to stay in the window as well. Okay, so there we've got the number that we're working with, number seven. And now you can have the student count out seven uh, ginger kid chips. And now um, the student uh, closes his or her eyes or turns around, uh, but they can't peek because you're going to hide those seven ginger kids inside the house some upstairs and some downstairs. Now to make this easy for me to illustrate to you, I've actually um, just uh, taped those uh, ginger kids on there. Okay, so once you have them in the house, you close up the house and the student turns around or they open their eyes and uh, this is where it gets really fun um, because they get to open up the downstairs and see how many ginger kids were hiding downstairs. And then of course the question is, well if there were four hiding downstairs, how many are hiding upstairs? And they love this. They love to make a prediction and then test their prediction by um, peeking and looking and seeing that, um, yes, indeed, their prediction was correct. They had guessed three. Okay, so um, you can um, continue to work with numbers that they're comfortable with, but now that they know how to play uh, the game, um, you can go to the next level which is working in their zone of proximal development, and that simply means um, getting them a little bit out of their comfort zone. So I'm gonna continue to use seven as my example, but let's say I'm working with a student now who's not quite as comfortable with uh, the number seven, so this is perfect. And so again, I would have that student count out the seven uh, ginger kids, but this time, they can count them out on the counting strips. Okay, they're in a one-to-one -one correspondence there. So they got all their ginger kids counted out, all seven of them. And then again, you take those kids and you hide them in the house without them looking. And then they turn around and then they open up the downstairs. And then they need to figure out how many ginger kids are hiding upstairs. Now you can use the counting strip again to help them. You can ask them, you know, how can we use the counting strip to help you uh, solve this problem? Then, of course, you're going to guide them. So um, it may be that, and I recommend not using um, ginger kids to help solve the problem because we don't want kids to get confused with the ginger kids that are on their game board and the ginger kids that are here. So that's why you have the counting beans. So they can use the beans, and they can, you know, do it several ways. They can put seven um, beans on the counting strip and that would represent the seven um, ginger kids that are hiding in the house and then since they can see those four ginger kids downstairs they can take four off and they can see what's left is three and um, they can peek underneath there and see that yes indeed it's three another way to do that would be to put four beans on here and then count up to seven and then see that they added seven beans to that. Um, and then again, they would peek and see that that yeah, is, is correct. So you've got a lot of, of addition and subtraction number facts going on here for um, the number sevens. You're getting that inverse operations in there as well. And that's, that's really good for establishing um, the foundation for number sense. Okay, so um, you can continue to work with the number seven. In fact, um, an extension to this would be to have the student come up with and write down the different combinations to seven. So for example, this one would be four plus three equals seven. 
And if they have whiteboards, kids love to write on whiteboards, if you're lucky enough to have them, um, they can write the combinations on the whiteboards, but paper and pencil works just as well. And you can see here that I have all the different combinations to seven. Now, obviously, um, theirs are not going to look like this. In fact, they may not come up with all of the different combinations. But what you can do is, if you have a group of students who are working on number seven, you can regroup them and then have them share some of their combinations. And then you can organize it um, on the board like this. And this is a nice way to organize it because now you can do a pattern search. Do you, does anybody see any patterns on here? And of course, one of the first ones that they're going to come up with is counting from zero to seven. Um, and then counting backwards from seven as well. And then they all equal seven, so we're coming up with all the different ways um, to compose uh, that number seven. So you're getting some, um, some good, again, some, some great number sense um, in here. Now we often forget poor little old zero, so it's really important that um, we have zero on here as well, because zero is a number um, and it needs to be represented. So, and, and here's something, uh, some students may come up with, and they may see that zero plus seven is the same as seven plus zero, and if they don't, try and guide them in that direction, because um, what you're doing is introducing them to the commutative property of addition, which says that the order of the add-ends, uh, the order that the add-ends are added does not make a difference, and that's really important, again, for that number sense foundation. So you can add a zero plus seven, which is the same as seven plus zero, or one plus six is the same as six plus one, but you're sneaking in a little algebra and talking about um, some properties of number, which is so important. Okay, now here are some other tips that you can do. Um, once students are familiar with um, how uh, Ginger Kid Hide and Seek is played, you can pair them up and they can create problems for each other to solve, which they love. Um, I recommend using numbers that they're comfortable with. And in fact, you can have them work in pairs to come up with um, those uh, combinations as well. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a um, buddy class, um, then you can have those older kids come down and work with your students as well. And you can actually have them working um, in their zone of proximal development so that they're going to have all these little teachers, um, older uh, students out there, um, teaching and working with the younger ones on their number facts. It's a really powerful um, way, uh, way to do that. And then, of course, the little guys look up to the older ones. They just, you know, think they're all so wonderful. So it's really a very um, powerful lesson um, to do with, uh, with the students. Um, so you can see that this one little simple activity really packs a powerful learning punch. And it's also um, a great assessment for, a tool for you as well. Um, kids love uh, to play Ginger Kid Hide and Seek. I know that your students will too, so have fun.